so the title of this guide is how to improve your play or your play style or your gameplay how to improve your gameplay that means basically how can you become a great player a good player right so the question is what makes a good player now I've divided uh, the answer in three parts and I'm gonna have to say the first one is game knowledge this one is pretty straightforward what it means is you need to know everything about the game pretty much so uh, that means classes and their abilities and how they use them the best way to do this would be to play every single class but of course not everyone can uh, dedicate that much time for, for this game. So um, what I would recommend is go on, on forums like Arena Junkies or the WoW forums or MMO Champion to the PvP section and look for actual guides for different classes, not just your own. Also you can ask players, good players or decent players or even bad players, ask them if you duel them, ask them how they did certain things and how they do certain things. Like a rogue, ask him how, how does he open. This is going to give you a feel for what other classes play like. And you're going to know, like uh, Hand of Sacrifice for example. If a Holy Paladin uses Hand of Sacrifice on someone, then you pretty much can't CC the Paladin unless you dispel Hand of Sacrifice. Also for instance, Roar of Sacrifice, which is a, a Hunter's pet ability. So if you want to stop that, you're gonna want to CC the pet or even silence the pet. So it's stuff like that. Stuff like knowing as many things as you can about every class and spec in the game. This is going to give you an overall view of the game and you're not gonna feel like, you know, wait, what the hell just happened? How is that guy full HP? How did that guy die? All that kind of stuff. So without having game knowledge, of classes and spells there is really no way of you progressing too much in this game because you're always gonna be wondering what the hell just happened you know the more you know about the game the better you're gonna be at the game it's as simple as that now the second idea would be actual gameplay what I mean by that is you want to be comfortable with all your abilities all your keybinds you have you want to be able to use your abilities as fast as you can so be really fast with your keybinds and um, you want to always always do something in a game basically if you look at an example this is a uh, arena i played i'm not an extraordinary player but i realize you have to minimize the the time you spend without casting anything so if you look at my if my at my bars, you would see that when I do it right, my abilities are never um, my global cooldown is always active, always always turning, always spinning. Except when you cast uh, longer cast spells, of course, or when you just line of sight or stuff like that. But when you are actually going at it, you want to you should have a goal to always have something going on. So if there's Everyone in the enemy team is dotted and you have no mind blast, no procs, nothing. Just spam your purge, get your purge or rebuff or there's always always something to do with your with your global cooldowns. You want to get to a point where all this all these things um, all your abilities that you do become automatic. Now the way you you practice this one the way you get better at uh, this particular thing which is uh, be really fast with your keybinds and uh, cast a lot of stuff yeah be very active in the game in the duel in the arena is uh, there's two ways of doing this but it all comes down to one thing which is practice so one of them is uh, duels and this actually applies to the first um, to the first concept as well which is game knowledge if you duel a lot provided you're not gonna win too many duels as a shadow priest against good or decent players but it is going to give you a really good understanding and a good feel of uh, what an enemy is going to do and uh, it's gonna make you pretty much faster with everything you personally do i would say that dueling is not enough for a shadow priest because uh, your your biggest strength 
is not necessarily in your burst damage or your pressure, but all of that combined with the with the amount of utility you bring to the team. So the best way to um, improve with the actual gameplay is to actually practice. So I would suggest just play as much as you can. But when you play games, don't just don't, don't just go through the games and you know you lose or you, or you win and okay let's queue again. I mean you are going to queue again, but the idea is to actually during the game to actually think of um, of what you are doing. At some point, I even had some uh, some post-its on my monitor saying "purge, purge, mind blast" or "mind blast purge" because uh, I felt like I have a problem with getting orbs. I was uh, dotting too much, and I was I was kind of leaving my my orbs a bit behind. I would have a mind blast off cooldown, and I wouldn't have three orbs, and I would just keep dotting. And also, for a while, I wasn't purging as much as I should. So I had those uh, like right up on my monitor, and yeah, it, it improved a lot for me. I think practicing actual uh, arena is much better than practicing duels for a Shadow Priest, but practicing with duels is pretty darn good as well. When uh, skirmishes are gonna come out in Warlords of Draenor, I think that's gonna be a second best for, for practicing. So it's gonna be actual arena, and then skirmishes, and then duels. The third concept, I guess, would be field of vision and game awareness, and this is probably one of the biggest and the hardest to to actually train. There is no real other way to train this than to play arena. Like that's the bottom line. There's no way to practice this except by playing a lot and a lot of games. So what I mean by field of vision and the game awareness is um, where are you actually looking at your screen when you play the game? So when you are when you start off and you are relatively new to arena you are going to feel confused and overwhelmed with the amount of stuff going up in the game. However, you have all the information you need on your screen. You just gotta get used to glancing and taking all that information in. The bigger your field of vision is, the better you are as a player. You will see that really skilled players and really high rated players have a really large field of vision. Meaning they can see a lot more. That's, that's all there is to it. They can see a lot more that's going on in the game than a lower rated player. So when you start out, you might be focusing a bit too much over here, or maybe looking over here to see your cooldowns. Or if you're a healer, you might be looking all the time right here. But as you progress, your field of vision expands and you can literally see more of what's going on around you. And you're gonna pretty much see all those things that I just talked about, like your cooldowns, your... Um, uh, party frames, the focus frame, the enemy frames, you're gonna see them all at the same time. It's uh, it's weird how it works, but that's just how it is. And not only that, but you will also see when you get even better, you will, not will, you will start noticing actual positioning. So you need to be constantly aware of the enemy position, the enemy's healer position, your healer's position, and this is actually pretty hard in the beginning because, as I said, there's so much information and like you're getting trained by a warrior and a hunter and your healers CC'd and everyone's dying and you're panicking and you're dead. So you have to actively challenge yourself in every single game to see more and not waste global cooldowns. So be very active in the game and be um, very present. And I have a few examples for you here in the, the field of vision and game awareness. So in this example, I see the enemy priest running in for my healer, actually for all of us. And that can only mean he's going to fear. So in that, in that split second, I think, I think to myself, okay, I'm going to fear word myself and I'm going to start casting mass dispel because the only explanation for him doing that is a fear. As you can see, I fear word myself and I get the fear of my healer instantly. In this example, I glance over to the right and see the enemy warlock casting a fear. Now this fear is, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be on my healer, so I start casting mass dispel right away, even though he's not yet feared. And I was right, he gets feared, but instantly gets dispelled, he doesn't have to tremor. Again, in this example, I see again a fear being cast, 
And again, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be on my Shaman because he just came out of a trap. So I think that's gonna be their CC chain. So I target him and give him Fear Word. And as you can see, the Fear Word just disappears. So that means, yes, the Fear was indeed on my Shaman. Again, in this example, I clearly see my uh, my healer getting scattershot. So I grip him immediately. And by the way, a lot of these examples are not... My healer doesn't get to say he's scattered because I, I see it right away. And that's what I mean by, by having field of vision. If I were to look just at my DPS target, at my my, uh, my target that I'm DPSing, then I wouldn't see this unless my healer would, would say, you know, I'm scattered. And that might be too late for me to, to actually grip. I'd have to dispel. So in this game alone, I stopped eight different CCs on my healer. So uh, that actually brings us a win. Now, a very, very important part of becoming a better player has actually nothing to do with the game itself, but rather with you. And that is your attitude and your mindset. Your goal in every single game, in my opinion, should be to improve. Your aim is to improve, to become a better player. You don't necessarily want to win this particular game. I mean, you do definitely want to win, but your overall goal should be learning. The question then becomes, what can you do better? And to answer that, you must ask, what are you doing wrong? And a great way to find out what you're doing wrong is to actually record your own games. When you record your own games and you look over them afterwards, you will generally find small mistakes but those small mistakes, if you look closely, in case, it, at least in my case they did, they tend to repeat themselves. So I'll give you an example for myself. I, um, I used to, to focus too much on one target, so I would... Uh, like, this is actually pretty recent. I used to dot one target up with my procs and everything, and pay close attention to my focus and my allies. But I would always leave the third enemy completely alone. I would I would never even look at him. I would look at him and dot him every once in a while, but I would I would focus way too much on one person. And I f I actually found that out. I looked at my own recordings and I saw, dude, I am never switching targets. I'm looking at this guy and l just looking at my guys and the enemy healer, and that's it. The third guy is free to do whatever he wants, and I wouldn't dot properly at some point. I wouldn't keep my uh, my my, my uh, shadow word pain on as many targets as I could have, and a lot of times I was waiting for, I was sitting on three orbs way too long, and my my procs would just expire, and I would still not use my devouring plague. And I realized that, and now I'm a lot better with that thing. So I'd say recording your own games actually helps a ton, but when you re when you look over your own games. Never, never, ever blame your partners for a loss. You don't care what they did wrong. Well, you care what they did wrong if you want to help them, but if you want to help yourself, just always consider what you could have done better. There's always something you could have done better. In any game, at any rating, I don't care. If it's pos positioning, if it's uh, CCing an enemy when he was bursting, peeling, anything, there's always something you could have done better. And if you, if you get to see a pattern in your mistakes, then that's what you have to, to fix first. Now, more about attitude and mindset. You want to, as I said, be focused on your own gameplay and your own improvement. You can't really be there to teach everyone, and you shouldn't. You're there to improve your own play. And know that it's never an ally's fault that you lost. It might be, but just don't think of it like that. Because if you start blaming others, doing that is pointless, really. I mean, the best you could do is uh, tell your, your partner, dude, you, you, you did that thing wrong or this thing wrong. And they shouldn't get angry about it. If they get angry about it, then they're being childish and silly. And you shouldn't play with them anymore. <laughs> Maybe. And it's the same with you. If someone tells you you did something wrong, you need to be very objective and clear about it. And if they're right, then they're right. And you say, you're right, thank you, I'm sorry. You're gonna do better next time. 
and I want to say a few things about the mindset. Having a positive mindset is uh, is really important. It's actually more important than you think. You think it's uh, something basic and stupid, but no, it's not. <laughs> and what I mean by positive mindset is uh, playing to win. And I talked a little bit about this in uh, one of my other videos. Uh, if you look at really good players, you will see that they always play to win. They never overcommit. They never do unnecessary stupid stuff. Well, sometimes they do when they just want to be silly. But they, when, when they play seriously, they play to win. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the goal. And if you don't die, you, you can't lose. You can always change the course of a game. Even if you're way behind, with a team like God Comp, you can literally change the course of a game in, in one deep freeze. You can kill someone really fast. And any, I think any comp with a Shadow Priest can kill stuff really, really fast. This is what's gonna happen. You are going to get, either you or your mage is going to get um, focused really heavily and your healer could fall behind in healing. You might have to use ice block, dispersion, everything like in the first 10 seconds of a game, right? Against RMP, you might have to disperse the opener. But just know that you can always come back really, really fast. If you get a double fear on DPS with the silence on the priest, and then the mage gets a sheep on the priest and a deep on a rogue, the rogue can just die, like just like that. Because you have so much CC and so much uh, utility. Another thing you absolutely must do in order to become actually good at this game is uh, admit and recognize that this is a team game. So you want to be communicating with your teammates a lot. Generally, you want to call out everything Everything important that you do. Don't uh, call when you mind blast. Don't call when you shadow word pain everything. But always call out stuff. Not only what you do, but call out if you see something the enemy does that you think uh, your team should know. And also, it's not enough to just communicate what you and uh, what you see the, en the enemy doing. You must also learn to listen. So, in a, in a good team, everyone's talking pretty much at the same time. And you can't just do your stuff and call your cooldowns and all that and expect to win. I mean, you could, but the idea is to actually listen to your partners as well. If your healer says, I'm feared, okay, then... Uh, or if he says, I'm cycloned, I'm CC'd, I can't heal for, ten, for 5 seconds, uh, then you need to say, okay, I'm going to line of sight the damage. Or, or okay, I'm... should I disperse? You need, you, need, you need to communicate. Communicate, not just talk to yourself. In the description below, I'm going to add some links to what I feel like are some of the best guides and tutorials out there. They're not going to be necessarily for Shadow Priests, but I think they're really worth a, a watch. Also, I'm going to share with you a book, actually, that you should really check out. It's called uh, Mastery by Robert Greene. And it applies to a lot of things uh, in life. But you can actually apply it to World of Warcraft Arena as well. And it, it's really, really good. And if you want to be a real badass, you should definitely give that book a read. Or you can just download the ebook version and just have it on your, on your iPhone or whatever. And uh, that's what I used to do. I would uh, just listen to it on my way to the gym. Uh, I think there's a free download somewhere on the internet. I'm pretty sure there is. I hope this, uh, this part and this whole guide helped. If it did help, then I'm not going to ask for likes or thumbs up. But I'm going to ask you to share it with uh, whoever you think uh, could benefit from this. And they don't have to be, you don't have to be really a shadow priest to, to follow the guide. I mean, yeah, the first part of the guide with the glyphs and talents and all that, that's pretty much shadow priest only. But everything else, every, every class and every spec can apply the same principles in this guide at least. So with that being said, this guide is officially ended. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope this helped. And have a great day, guys. Anboni signing out. See ya.